This video is to introduce Programming Assignment 2 and to show you how you can integrate it with um, the Hyperskill website tools and IntelliJ IDE. You don't have to use either of those. You can do the assignment on your own with any IDE that you like. And it's not that hard. But if you want to get some help and maybe learn something new, you might want to take a look at this. So first of all, let's go over the problem. You've probably read by now that you're supposed to write a command line interface to a program that can encrypt or decrypt some text. And the, the driver for the command line should be a class named crypt. And then it has these options. So let's just do an example. So in the bin, I already have some compiled source. I can type Java crypt, give it the phrase that I want to encrypt and give it a key, which is used by the cipher. This is just a rotation cipher, so it's how much to rotate. And it prints the encrypted text on the terminal. If I want to decrypt it, take the text and copy it, and then type Java crypt minus data, give it the text that we want to decrypt, five and this time type mode is equal to decrypt and hopefully we get the original text back since this is just a simple rotation cipher to say key equals five and mode equals decrypt is the same as key equals minus five and the mode is encrypt you don't have to type that because it's the default so both ways, we should get the text back again. Now let's take a look at this same assignment on the JetBrains Academy, which is also called Hyperscale. So the website, JetBrains Academy, if you go there, the Hyperscale, they have, let me go back to their main page, they have a list of projects. And the very first one is the one that you're doing encryption decryption. Some of the projects look quite interesting, so you might want to take a look at them. This one called Readability is similar to uh, assignment I used to use in OOP, and maybe we'll do it again. Uh, the Nightmare Projects, I think the Blockchain, Text Editor, the Web Crawler, all look very interesting. So you could just click the project, and if you wanted to automatically come back here next time you visit the site, you'd click on Select This Project. But you can see this project is broken down into six stages. And at each stage, they add some more requirements. At the beginning of each stage, there's an interview where they ask you what topics you know. They list the topics that are needed and ask if you know them or not. And then after you go through all of that, if you say that you don't know things, they will have some text explaining the topic and require you to do some exercises to show that you know it. So if you're weak on anything, uh, you can use this as a review. After you've gone through all the topics, you can click on Stage Implementation, and they'll show you the problem that you're supposed to do. So, down here at the bottom, there's a description of what you're supposed to do at this stage. And you're supposed to encrypt a message just by swapping letters. Swap A for Z, B for Y, C for X, etc. Now you can do this problem right in the code editor that they have here. You click Run, and they'll check your code for you. Or you can click on IDE, 
and then click solve in IDE. And right now, IntelliJ is not running on my system, so it says IDE is not responding. But if I start IntelliJ, well, let's see. It won't start automatically. You have to start IntelliJ yourself. So I'll start IntelliJ. There it is. Now, I should tell you, in order for this to work in IntelliJ, you need to have the EDU tools plugin installed. So here's the IntelliJ screen. And the very first item on the screen, this is another way to get to the JetBrains Academy, where it says teach and learn. If you open that, you can say open JetBrains Academy project. And it will go back to whatever project you were working on there. Uh, Coursera and Stepic are also well-known online learning sites. Uh, Coursera is in the U.S. and Stepic was created in Russia, I believe. However, in order for you to have this, you have to have the EDU tools extension installed. So to do that, you go down in the configure menu, click configure, plugins, and in a menu of plugins installed on your system, or plugins that are available, um, look for the EDU tools plugin. And it's, it's not very big and installs quite quickly, so you just click install and it will do it. It's already installed on my system. The first time you use it, it's kind of slow because it uses Gradle to download a bunch of stuff. Anyway, I don't need to do that. I can ju just click, um, because I launched it by going to the JetBrains website first and then click Solve in IDE, I can just click here. And it says, the path, blah, 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 does not exist. Oh, I removed it so I could show you this again. All right, so remove it. So let's go the other way. I wanted to show you how to create. Please select a project. Okay. This is what you would see if you had started by launching IntelliJ first. So I select the project, come back here, go again down to the stage implementation, and let's see what happens this time. And click IDE, solve in IDE, and it should create a project for you in the IDE, and it will ask you, where do you want to put the project? There. So, by default, it's going to list your home directory and then it will say IDEA Projects. But you don't have to use the default. You can see I've changed it to be a directory called Workspace, which is where I normally put my projects. And if you have more than one JDK in your system, it's going to ask you which JDK you want to use also. So I'll go back to the default ID, JDK and click Continue and it loads the project. It also downloads a lot of stuff the first time, so it may be a little bit slow. I'm going to pause this for a minute and come back when it's ready. Okay, so here's the project after IntelliJ has finished downloading files. So it shows you the IntelliJ IDE and over here is a directory browser which shows your work in the project. So they create a pretty deep directory structure. First there's a directory with the project name, encryption decryption, and inside of that there's going to be some exercises. Then there's the project itself which is another subdirectory with the same name, encryption, decryption, and then inside of that 
are you can't see it here but there's a source directory and then inside of that there's a package directory for the package they're using which is name encrypt decrypt uh, don't change that because if you change it when you try to check the code it will it will not think it's correct so we don't need the uh, project browser right now so let's just minimize that and then we can work on the problem so on the right hand side they have an explanation of what you're supposed to do and it says in this first stage we want you to uh, translate the letters by swapping A with Z, B with Y, etc, etc and then after you do it you can click on check and also the message that you're supposed to encrypt is we found a treasure not hello world so we can change that to be we found a treasure don't forget the exclamation mark and then we need to encrypt it so let's create a function called encrypt and we'll call that function so encrypt some text and return it I always write javadoc while I'm coding just to remind me what I'm supposed to do so this is going to also be a static function you can make it private it's going to return a string the name is encrypt and it's going to take some text that we want to encrypt if we can type so how are we going to do that we need to uh, examine it character by character and if the character is a lowercase letter then we're going to change it so let's convert the string into and copy the string into an array so we don't have to keep examining the string repeatedly let's create an array called cares and just call text.to text.to care array now we've got an array and then we can write a for loop an index for loop uh, to go over it and just to save time something like that and just loop over the cares if the care is a letter then we can actually do a little arithmetic on the character and put it back in the array and then create a new string from the array that we just processed and then down here in our main method we can call encrypt and that's IntelliJ that's something unique to IntelliJ is that it puts a little whenever you put a a constant literal for a parameter it puts the name of the parameter in there it's not actually in the code it just looks like it okay after you've done that can click check and hopefully it's correct so now you can click continue and go back it will take you right back to the web browser and you can continue no I think it won't take you back to the web browser it will continue to show you the lesson right inside of the IDE continue on to or you can click next or you can go back there if you click next what is it going to do it loads the next exercise the next part of the problem so anyway that's an introduction to how to do this problem using uh, the JetBrains Academy, also known as Hyperskill. And you get some points when you finish doing it correctly. You don't have to use this. I think you can do the problem right in your favorite web browser. But you might want to use this website uh, just to find things that are interesting. Particularly when you get to stage six, they introduce some design patterns and those patterns will help you write a uh, better solution. I'm going to discuss those patterns in class. So that's it.
uh, give it a try if you're interested.